So finishing up with Dreams and Masterminds, the thing that's interesting about it is, with we, like I said, I'm a comic book fan, I have lots of friends that are comic book fans, and it's pretty well regarded around my circle at least as the kind of the killer app mm -hmm. uh, superhero RPG. So now we're in the third edition. Yep. When you, when this all started, like what 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 was the original inspiration? Are, are you just a huge comic book fan, or like what what were you like? I'm gonna start working on a superhero game. Well, Mutants and Masterminds came about originally because uh, I had um, designed a uh, the Freedom City, what would become the Freedom City setting, um, as a, a freelance project on my own uh, for another publisher, and um, that that publishing arrangement fell through um, as as they sometimes do and. The rights of the project reverted to me, um, and it was just sort of a hobby thing that I worked on in my spare time because I love, I do love comics. I'm a uh, comic book reader from way back, even before I was playing RPGs, um, and so I was just building out this this whole superhero city and its characters and its setting and backstory and all of that stuff just for fun. Um, and as it became more and more detailed and fleshed out, uh, I really wanted to do something with it and share it with people. Um, and so, but unfortunately, at the time, there was absolutely no superhero RPGs in print. Uh, there were no publishers for me to approach about it um, and and pitch it to. And so, I um, talked to Chris Premus, who's the the president of Green Marine. We were we were friends and um, industry colleagues and. I was I was basically just complaining to him about the. It's okay. It happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, almost every interview. Um, I was I was basically just complaining to him about my my situation of having a, a superhero setting and no nothing to do with it, mm -hmm. and um, Green Ronin was was you know doing a lot of D twenty publishing uh, at the time. It had just really gotten started um, with the open open game license, and Chris said, well. You know, let me take a look at the setting, um, and I sent him a copy, and he said, oh, "This is really good. You know, um, you're right. It, we should try and find a way to put it out there. Um, how about would you be interested in designing a, a D20 superhero game? Mm -hmm. And if you design the game, we can do a two book deal. We'll do the we'll do the game and the setting. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we'll put those out, and we'll see how it goes from there. And I was like, honestly, I was really dubious because I thought a D20 superhero game would be terrible, um, and um, I, but I really wanted to put the setting out there, so I sat down and I said, "Okay, I'll think about it. Let me let me give some thought to it, see if it's something I think I can do." And I, I really looked at, started looking at the um, game mechanics and the system resource document and taking things apart and saying, "Okay, how would I do this if I was going to do a superhero game?" And I came up with some ideas that I liked and I thought would work, uh, and so I, I put together a proposal, and um, that is the core of what eventually became Mutants and Masterminds. So. Um, you know, I, I tell Chris that, you know, clearly he was right and I was wrong and a D20 superhero game was apparently a really good idea. Um, and, um, yeah. Sales do not lie. No, indeed. Um, and, you know, we, we started off with, you know, we'll put a couple books out and see how, it, how it'll do. And now it's, you know, we into, into our third edition and, you know, we're dozens of books later and apparently it's, it's doing pretty well. So. Now, I'm, exp I'm extremely polygamous. I've not had a chance to try... Uh, Mutants and Masterminds 3rd Edition yet. What are some of the differences between, say, 3rd Edition and 2nd Edition that players can look forward to? They're not really... Uh, the, the differences aren't all that significant in, the, in terms of gameplay. A lot of people are going to find that if they're familiar with 2nd Edition, under the hood, 3rd Edition plays very much the same way. We made a couple of minor tweaks uh, to, that, that, will, that will affect gameplay. Uh, like um, changing the um, stunned condition from, from damage to a dazed condition so that characters aren't quite so incapacitated by it and they could still take half their allotment of actions instead of losing an entire round of actions because that seemed to be penalizing uh, players a little too much and taking them out of the action of the game. Um, but for the most part, most of the, the stuff for third edition um, it was really just a matter of, of cleaning up and clarifying and consolidating a lot of things. So we, we changed some terms for consistency's sake 
we took out uh, some of the the um, sort of legacy stuff from the the D twenty system resource document uh, that didn't really apply to mutants and masterminds very well as a game. So uh, we we changed some of the terms. We changed like the name of, of some of the ability scores. Like wisdom is now awareness mm -hmm. because wisdom was kind of a fantasy esque term. Um, you know, uh, we we um, changed and consolidated some of the the skill list. A little bit. So, for example, um, we we took the you know climb and swim skills and put them together to make a single athletic skill. Okay. Um, uh, and it's just a lot of minor sort of cleaning up, uh, polishing the chrome, and um, really just making the the whole presentation more consistent mm -hmm. and hopefully easier to read and understand and accessible, especially for folks who are coming into it from the DC side of things and may not have been familiar with the game previously. Now, I'm a fan of the digest-sized rulebook, and the uh, Mutants and Masterminds has had a digest-sized rulebook in the past, and he plans on bringing the third edition out in a digest size. Well, the, the third edition book is actually smaller than our standard format. It's, it's uh, um, basically graphic novel sized. Uh, which, which definitely makes sense. Right, rather than the, the usual 8x10 uh, books we've been doing, uh, or 8 and f by 11 books we've been doing. Um, so I don't know if we're going to necessarily do a pocket guide scale down from that size or not, um, but but that smaller sort of graphic novel size is probably going to be the default print size for the third edition that's, game line. That's a really cool idea because it definitely like it, it makes you think comic book when right. you look at it. Right, absolutely. So lastly, Steve, when we look around at gaming right now and all, all over the con, gaming is becoming a much bigger pot with a lot more people in it, it's mm -hmm. becoming very diverse. Absolutely. And I know you're a pivotal member in a group called Gamers. Mm -hmm. Would you give us a little bit of background on that? Because sure. I'm, I'm sure. not totally familiar, and I don't know if the audience is. And I think it's really great that it's kind of like uh -huh. everybody in the pool, like, let's, you know, let's keep make gaming uh -huh. diverse. Let's make sure that sure. You know, sure. all, all people are being serviced. Well, Gamers with a Y, it's mm -hmm. G-A-Y-M-E-R-S, is a Yahoo group um, that a friend and I started. Um, quite some years ago um, when um, he and I were just having a, a conversation at a Gen Con um, about uh, there not being a good networking resource for, for um, gay, lesbian, bisexual uh, game fans. Uh, and uh, so we were like, well, you know, obviously if we want one, we should see about making one and just stop complaining about it. Um, and so we started up this Yahoo group, and it, it's grown steadily over the over the years. Um, I think we have uh, something like seven, eight hundred um, member list members, um, and it's it's mainly just a resource um, for for um, um, gay, lesbian, bisexual gamers to have a chance to network, um, mm -hmm. find people in their local area, talk to people uh, over longer distances, make some connections, share stories and experiences, um, and you know, just all the, the same things that people of shared experience do. Um, and uh, it's also been a really great resource because um, we've been approached as a community um, on occasion by publishers by convention organizers uh, and by people in the industry who who have come to us and said, "How can we be more inclusive? How can we make you feel more welcome?" Um, and that's been really nice when uh, you know when a when a game developer comes to us and says, "We're working on revising you know an edition of our game. How can we make our game feel more inclusive to you?" Absolutely. And you know. like I said, yeah, bringing more people into the pool, m making sure mm -hmm. that people don't feel shut out, yeah, or absolutely. like they're all alone. Absolutely. Um, and that's been really good, and it's it's been an opportunity for people to have their say and really voice uh, where they're at and and how they want to be a part of the hobby and the industry. So. That's awesome. Steve, this has been a great interview. Thank you. Um, do you have any websites you want to plug? Obviously, greenronin.com. Yeah, uh, greenronin.com and mutantsandmasterminds.com are where folks can, can hear about all of the latest stuff, all the new products, all of the news, um, and uh, the latest updates. Um, if uh, folks want to check out um, my blog and my other uh, writing stuff, it's uh, stevekenson.com. Um, and uh, the, the Gamers group is, is a, a Yahoo group. If you just search on Gamers, G-A-Y-M-E-R-S, um, that should come up in the, the Yahoo group's uh, list. Um, so anyone who's interested in the group is welcome to subscribe. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty much it. So. Steve, thank you so much. Very informative. My pleasure.